proper identification of the suprapubic landmarks is crucial to prevent injury to the ilioinguinal nerve where it runs lateral to the pubic tubercles. Two exit site incisions are marked approximately 2 cm apart at the pubic symphysis which can be easily palpated on the model. The simulator is placed in Schindelberg position and hydrodissection may be used to help create space in the retropubic region. I use a dilution of 100 cc of normal saline, 20 units per tressin, and 20 cc of 0.5% marcaine, and inject 40 to 50 cc on either side. This can be done from the bottom up or the top down. I also inject several cc into the midurethral dissection plane. A 1.5 to 2 cm incision is made through the full thickness of the vaginal wall overlying the midurethra. The model has a full thickness vaginal wall and an endopelvic fascia layer. The scissor tips should be oriented at a 45 degree angle to the horizontal plane and 45 degrees to the vertical plane. An advantage sling is used for demonstration. The tip of the trocar is inserted into the dissection pocket lateral to the midurethra. Awareness of the handle position is key to prevent unwanted migration of the trocar tip. Note the rigid Q-tip catheter guide is deviated to the ipsilateral side of the trocar placement. The flat portion of the handle and the trocar tip are directed towards the ipsilateral shoulder of the patient. The tip is advanced slowly and the urogenital diaphragm is pierced. About 2 cm of forward advancement is usually sufficient to pass underneath the pubic rami bone. The handle is then dropped to bring the tip just under the pubic bone on the retropubic side. The trocar handle is then brought back into the sagittal plane. Note the position of the hand supporting the trocar needle supplies most all the force for the trocar passage. The trocar is past cephalad, hugging the back side of the pubic bone as shown. The red represents the obturator internus muscle and the ridge is the arcus tendineus fascia pelvis, or white line, which extends down to the ischial spine. Once the suprapubic skin is tented, the hand on the trocar handle is used to give countertraction to facilitate passage of the needle tip through the skin. This is the retropubic view with the bladder in place. The steps are repeated for placement on the contralateral side, and cystoscopy should be performed, confirming no urethral or bladder injuries. And of course, this is what we all should see on your cysto. The sling is then pulled up from the suprapubic sites and placed tension-free underneath the mid-urethra and the spacer is used as seen here. The centering tab is then cut, which releases the plastic sheaths, and some countertraction will be necessary to prevent migration of your perfect sling placement. Excess sling is then cut below the level of the skin. Proper sling placement can be easily checked on the model. The full thickness vaginal wall incision is then closed with the absorbable suture of choice. <music>